Hi, everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, Yesterday, we did Galatians, and today we're back into Acts. Today, we're looking at Acts 17 to 18, 18. So we're doing like 18 and a half, I guess. Uh, But picking up a couple of Paul's journeys a couple of details that happened to him in different cities. Uh, It is very obvious to see now that we're like halfway through the book of Acts that the gospel is spreading at an incredible pace uh, over an incredible distance. It's pretty cool to see Paul stopping in one city, teaching the gospel, going to another city, teaching the gospel. Um, It's not easy for him, but there's a lot going on and a lot of people are coming to Christ. I also don't think I really realize the time because I feel like the the death and resurrection of Jesus would have been something that people would have heard about, like, all over the place. But, like, that was such a different time where, like, word of mouth was definitely a thing. But Paul is taking this message of Jesus to all these different places uh, to the point where, who do, who is it that he meets up with? And they're like, this guy is telling us about, like worshiping God, but not following all the laws. So like they're obviously accustomed to like Jewish practice, yeah. but they don't necessarily know about Jesus as much or yeah. Expand on that. Well, I think, I think we see it uh, specifically in chapter 17 and 18, you're seeing that Paul is going from people who are similar to him Mm -hmm. uh, and progressing towards people who are not like him at all. So he always, he has this pattern. He always goes to the synagogue first. That's mentioned a couple times. Um, In Thessalonica, he does that. I think in Berea, he does that. And he's reasoning with Jews. And sometimes the Jews are receptive. Uh, It sounds like in different places, there's also Greeks, there's non-Jews that are listening. Uh, But other times they're not receptive at all. And he has to go out. Something that just occurred to me while I was listening to you, um, in my mind, I oftentimes put Paul as the like the missionary to the Gentiles, the missionary yeah. to the Gentiles always. But something to remember is that he was also a missionary to the Jews. Yes. And I think that that can translate a lot to our day to day, because oftentimes we think like churches for unbelievers, churches for all the people who don't know about God, who don't like have a clue. And we need to be prepared to teach them. Um, and the rest of you guys, I guess, just like take some time to pray and read your Bible. <laughs> and Paul is definitely not doing that because he's correcting a lot of the, um, I guess the ignorance in a way of the Jews where he's like, Hey, like you don't have this all right. Like you need to continue in your relationship with God as well. Like forgetting those things behind you, like you're not bound to that anymore. So he's like doing both. And in my mind, he was always just this missionary to the Gentiles, but he's a missionary to the Jews too. And it is, I think it's coming through a lot in what we've read even today. He is one of the lead voices in bringing non-Jews into the fold of Christian Mm -hmm. believers. Um, We see that specifically, I think, in in the reading today when he goes to Athens, which I'd love to talk about Athens here in a little bit. Um, We see him in Thessalonica. They're not super receptive. Uh, There's a few people that hear him, but I like in verse six, these, this is the, the, uh, this is the, the people speaking to the authorities, these men who have turned the world upside down have Mm -hmm. come here also. So there's like a buzz out there that Paul and the Christian believers are stirring things up and causing issues. The issues they're causing is that they're saying, hey, we met the Christ. We know the Christ. You need to have faith in the Christ and not the law. Uh, But but the people in Thessalonica are like, nope, get out of here. So then he goes to Berea, and Berea is really cool, um, because when he starts teaching in the synagogue in Berea, you see that the the Jews there, um, this is chapter 17, verse I'll start in 10. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now, these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well. So the Bereans... um, had a regular habit of getting into the word every day, Mm -hmm. which is a great plug uh, for listening to the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, like we encourage you, like get in a good habit of reading God's word every day. And because the Bereans read God's word every day, they were able to see that what Paul was saying was true. Mm -hmm. And they were able to come to belief in Jesus as the Christ and they were saved. Now, if they were not in the word every day, you could assume 
that they would not have been receptive to what Paul was teaching, and they would have been more receptive towards their own traditions and histories that were safe. And positioning. Yeah, and positioning. So I, I love that little story about the Bereans mm-hmm. uh, and the example they set for us. Like, it, it makes sense that we don't have the wisdom we need to understand the culture around us if we are not regularly reading, studying God's word. That's really cool. I think something, and I don't want to always be like the dun dun dun, but I, I definitely go there. I, I like to compare my here and now to similarities of then. Obviously, we are not living in the exact same moment obviously. But I like to think about, like, comparatively speaking today, we can oftentimes, like, down, down, like, we can, we can put ourselves in these stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we down a lot of the, like, church is definitely for the people who, like, who don't know God at all. And as true as that is, there is an important piece here, because there are, there are people in Berea, like you're talking about, who are taking the time every day to, like, Make sure that what is being told to them is true and accurate mm-hmm. and supported by Scripture. Um, I think it's it's very easy to forget all of the roles and, I guess, give more light to one than the other. Um, I think it's really easy today to just be like, I don't know, focus so heavily on those who don't know God. But at the same time, like, we also need to keep our own selves in serious check, too, making sure we understand, making sure that, um, I don't know, we're just, we're backing ourselves up with Scripture all the time. It's interesting you keep uh, bringing up what church is for. It's a little bit of, like, a plug, but, like, as we get further into these letters, these pastoral epistles, it's, there's going to be some explicit direction on what church is for. And church is primarily for uh, equipping the saints and encouraging the believers and so you see here that Paul's message to those believers who were equipped um, was received well. Actually, in fact, if you look in the text, the Bereans were really interested in what Paul had to say. They were really interested in Paul's teaching. And it's only when agitators from Thessalonica come to Berea that there becomes a problem and they have to move on. It's not the Berean people that kick out Paul. It's the Thess- Thessalonians that were just following him. Mm-hmm. Um, and just another uh, thing to give some clarity here, if you haven't picked up on it already, tomorrow we'll be reading the the letters to the Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is kind of tracking the letters as we track Paul's journey. And so Paul here um, is in Thessalonica, then he's in Berea, then he's in Athens. Athens is really cool because there's not a ton of Jewish history there. And Paul actually uses the Athenian idolatrous culture. So like the fact that they're just like, <laughs> they can't wait to find a new God to worship. Um, the fact that they have a um, an idol to an unknown God, Paul's going to use their culture uh, to speak to them about who Jesus is. And some of them come to believe him, not as many. Uh, but some of them come to believe him. And then he moves on to Corinth, which, which is another uh, more modern city at that time. Uh, and he's he's going to start preaching and teaching them. He's actually in Corinth for quite a while. Another really interesting thing that Paul does in Athens, you can look, this is chapter 17, starting in verse 29. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed in the art and imagination of man. So he's subtly calling out, that they have all these statues and idols idols around. Mm -hmm. But then he says, The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Basically he's saying, uh, judgment is coming, and Jesus is the judge. And you're not permitted to be ignorant anymore. Everybody in all the world needs to come to saving faith in Jesus. So Paul's kind of doing this subtle like expansion. The expansion's been there throughout the whole Bible. We've kind of, anytime um, non-Israelite, non-Jewish believers come to know God, we've talked about that. So God has always been encouraging people of other tribes and nations to come to him. But here Paul's explicitly saying in Athens, hey, The world needs to come to know Jesus, and that's what we're doing. We're encouraging you to come to know Jesus. What does it mean when God overlooked? Like, our study Bible says he distances himself from the philosophers, so from all those men who are like, okay, tell us what you think. Um, It says God did not immediately judge the world in previous times. I think that Paul is teaching them that, hey, now is the time to come to know God. 
So in the past, there wasn't somebody coming and preaching and teaching to you. There wasn't somebody making this knowledge available to you, this news oh. available to you. Now the gospel has come, and now it's in your face. you need to you repent. Need to make a decision. There, yeah. there is a... Um, some scholars will talk about there was a Jewish understanding that a judgment would happen at some point further down the line. And so some people will make the case that judgment came once Jesus came. And so I'm sure um, some scholars would say Paul's actually teaching that judgment did not exist until now Jesus is here and now you have to come mm-hmm. and know him. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that holds up super well. We could do a deep dive on that at some really point. Um, but There are people out there that would tell you that judgment was not always a thing, but now it is a thing. I think Paul is just preaching to the audience saying, hey, you haven't known God, but Mm -hmm. now you can and you should. And so because I'm bringing you the truth and the gospel, you should repent and know Jesus, which is what he does in every other city that he's in. That's why I don't think it's hard to to make that jump, to make Mm -hmm. that case. It's like you've, it's not that you've never heard before. It's just that you've never made a decision once you've heard. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a it's like a really intense altar call, uh, I guess. Yeah. Like, hey, the the band's playing. Get up here. Seriously. Um. So then Paul lands in Corinth. We just talked about that a little bit. We're gonna have more time to talk about what Paul's up to in Corinth. Um. Tomorrow we're gonna read Thessalonians. Then we're gonna read a little bit more about Corinth. Then we're gonna read some of the letters to the Corinthians. So well, it's cool to read this in the the chronological order. I know you've done that in the past before too, but actually taking the time to read it and then in like real time, read the letters that he's talking about in some of these other places is pretty cool. It brings a lot more context to what's Mm -hmm. going on. And something just to draw it really quick in the end of our reading today, you will see that similar kind of like recipe for how to get rid of people that are um, coming up against the the Jewish, uh, I don't know, standings. Uh, Because we can see at the end of our reading today that they are, trying to do similar things that were that were done to Jesus where you bring them up against um, some person of power and that person is supposed to on the behalf of the Jews um, get rid of them which is what they're trying to do to Paul we'll see Gallio that is kind of like a pilot figure yes and the leaders of the synagogues are literally doing the same thing they're like oh he says there's another king which you remember Mm -hmm. um, the the leaders of the synagogue the high priest and stuff actually said to Caesar at one point we have no king but Caesar which Mm -hmm. is completely silly (laughs) Um, So your part for today, I am so encouraged by those Bereans, and I want to encourage you to be like the Bereans. Um, It's easy to read this and be like, oh, look at all these philosophers in Athens. Our world is so different. It's not different. (laughs) People people. are throwing philosophies at you all the time. And really, honestly, the more you read God's word first, I think, uh, and together with that, live by the spirit. We read yesterday in Galatians about how important it is to live a life empowered by the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you are reading God's word and you are in step with the spirit you're not going to be led astray a lot of those philosophies won't stand yeah like they just sound so silly because you're like nope god already revealed to me the truth and that is exactly what the bereans do the bereans Mm -hmm. read this and are like well he's bringing us a new philosophy it seems in line with what god is teaching i'm gonna believe what he's saying Mm -hmm. um so i just encourage you to be like them go go read over it for yourself see how they interacted Uh, with Paul, but it's pretty cool to see the faith of those Berean people. So let's be like Bereans. (laughs) We'll We'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.